Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passy. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale 50 foot ACF boxcar from Walther's Mainline. My model is decorated for Railbox and represents an XAF 10 class car. The MSRP for this model is $27.98. I paid $19.59 for my car at modeltrainstuff.com. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside, a two piece plastic cradle protects the model. A thin layer of clear film offers some additional protection against scratches. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. I wasn't able to find a photo of this particular car, RBOX 10765, but I found some other cars in the same class and number series. Though it lacks some small details, overall the car is a close match to the real thing. The paint job appears correct and all of the major details are in the right places. My car's build date is February 1975. The two photos I found of similar cars are from 1975 and 1980. Many Railbox cars lasted longer than that, but I wasn't able to find any photos of these particular cars after 1980. The lack of reference material doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't exist. Just means that I couldn't find pictures. The paint on the car is thick enough that it starts to soften some of the detail in places, though the effect isn't too bad. There are some small areas next to the ribs on the car sides where the yellow seems not quite opaque. With some weathering, this wouldn't be too noticeable. The markings are crisp and the tiny stencils are legible with magnification. There are a few voids in the large lettering and railbox arrows around the ribs on the car sides, but nothing too objectionable. Many of the details on this car, like the rungs and the side ladders, are molded on. The corner stirrups are thicker than scale too, likely a concession to making them durable. The placement of the tack boards matches the photos that I found of these cars. On the ends, the car has molded on ladders. The crossover platform is also molded on and is not see-through. The brake wheel is a separate part. There are no uncoupling levers or air hoses. While some simplified detail is acceptable on a lower priced model like this one, I'd like to see a little less molded on detail that can't be easily changed, so I'm taking 5 points. The panel detail on the roof looks good. The roof appears to be a separate part, though on my car it's glued down pretty well. It might be possible to work it loose if you wanted to add weight inside the car. Underneath the car has some freestanding brake piping which looks pretty good. The model has black and metal wheels with plastic axles. The car has metal Protomax knuckle couplers on both ends. Looking for a match along the horizontal center line, the coupler on the A end is at the correct height. The coupler on the B end is high, so I'm taking 5 points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The model wobbles pretty badly, so I'm taking 5 points. The car weighs 4.6 ounces, very close to the 4.5 ounce NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length. The model is free rolling. Let's see what we've got. Though some simplified detail is acceptable in a mid-priced model, this car had a lot of molded on detail that would be very difficult to correct so I took 5 points in the paint and detail category. The model had one high coupler and it wobbles so I took a total of 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 85 out of 100 possible points which would be a B on a report card. This is a good model and it deserves a green signal. If you're looking for a value priced box car and you don't care as much about detail then you might want to consider this one. 